Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy Codexual, also known as Hackual, which you should check out my other channel. It'll get more of the dark side of ethical hacking and cybersecurity and whatnot, so be sure to check that out. Um, today, we're going to be talking about malware analysis of containing it into a virtual environment, which we are using VirtualBox. If you want me to use uh, VMware, there'll be in a separate video, and we'll also be having another video for Windows version of a sandbox. Um, I'm going to assume that you have Windows 10 or some type of Windows installed on your VirtualBox, and we're gonna be talking about the settings real quick of setting that up. Uh, you can give it um, how much data you want, you can give it how many CPUs you want, the processor, this is how I have mine, I give it a little extra boost just for this video, so it won't be all laggy. Uh, but the things that I'm worried about is your network, your serial port, your USB, and your shared folders. Um, as for your network, I want you to have that attached to NAT. Don't have it attached to bridge adapter. If you have it attached to bridge adapter, it will share the same network that you're currently on. Because let's go back here and let's open up a command prompt. Uh, if I go to IP, type in IP config, um, this is the subnet. And if we go towards our main device here, our main computer, and type in IP config. You can see that it's on two different subnets, two different networks. So if there were happen to be on the same network and you were testing out a worm, it will scan, it could potentially scan for other devices that are on the network and attempt an attack on other devices. So you never want the um you never want it on the same network. So that's why you want it on NAT. It creates its own subnet. So Let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back to the settings here. Uh, don't have your serial port enabled, don't have USB uh, controller enabled, and don't have your shared folder because viruses will tend to attach to other directories, uh, scans for other devices that are on the network again. And um, with, you know, with USB, there is USB attachment um, that the virus could attach itself to the USB. So make sure that's uh, disabled. But for the sake of video, this is just a video. I, I don't care. It's enabled at this moment. Um, again, uh, disable it. Uh, two programs I'm going to be talking about is Sandboxy and also FakeNet. I did watch Hacker Sploit's video and I actually got this idea from him, which is actually a really great tool to have. Um, FakeNet allows you to simulate a fake network. So once you are opening up a file, it will generate packets and put it into a PCAP file which you can look at the packets and see what it's actually trying to connect to, where it's trying to connect out, um, what requests are sending. So um, the reason why I choose Sandboxy Control, even though that we're in a virtual environment and also have Sandboxy as well, uh, this can help me determine the difference between, um, let, let's open up Task Manager here. So once I open up a file, I'm trying to look at its processes. There, there's so many um, programs that are being, you know, there's so many processes. So if I happen to drag and drop the file in here, one, it will contain it in that environment. So it's not actually going out. It's not actually being infecting itself in the virtual environment, right? But this is like another step of control. So let's just say Google Chrome is a virus just for argument's sake if we drag and drop into this uh sandboxy here it also controls it into that environment we're going to go ahead and run it as administrator um i'm just going to minimize out of that so now we get to see uh google chrome uh pulling up all these other uh processes now if i go here like what if the pro what if the process is like um trying to attach itself to another uh program like trying to inject itself into another process that's really bad you don't want that um but now i'm able to filter out what process is running versus going through here like oh i don't recognize this program or we got to go towards our um details here it's like okay what do i know what's fake because there could be another cf uh cv um dot exe 
that could be running like there's so many of that so it just helps me filter out what's actually running versus what's legitimate on here or not um let's just say before i even found out about fake net what i usually do is go towards our command prompt here and i start to filter out what's actually i need to run this as administrator and i type in netstat dash b and it will start to pull up every process that's connected to every um service or domain or ip up there i see what port it's running on so this is on an http https protocol um this is going out to this service so it also gives me what process it's running out and i this is how i manually filter out things but let's go ahead and close out of this and terminate programs here with fake net um what we want to do is go towards our config file and we want to scroll down here and we want to create a um a dump out so we're gonna go ahead and type in yes now it's going to create all these p caps um we can also create a dump for a post so if there is a um uh, instead of a get method, it'll have a post method, which we can analyze further, but, f but, um, we're going to go ahead and hit save and we're going to run this as administrator. Uh, allow access. And now it's going to scan through all the traffic here and it's going to simulate it's going to simulate the fake net. Now it's going to start capturing in a PCAP in a packets format. So if we go towards our internet browser and go towards, I don't know, let's go to google.com. It's going to give us a little warning, which we're going to allow a um, certificate. If it wants to go through, I don't think it wants to go through. Maybe. I don't think it's allowing it. Uh, let's just go to Facebook. Just for an example. Okay. Usually it gives you a little warning saying it's going to simulate a fake net and it's going to capture packets, which is not capturing anything at all. So that is a little bit awkward for me. Um, Did I mess anything up? No, I did not. Well, this is commented out. What if we just type in no? And let's go ahead and reset it. Now it created, it generated something but it didn't generate enough. Like there was nothing really being sent towards to. All right, uh, Google. The set's insecure. Okay, so I guess it didn't like how we changed the dump output. Um, so this is the warning. Um, now, if we like open back up like Google Chrome, we can allow a certificate or add the exception. It's being a pain. Maybe with Firefox, it'll allow us. Oh, 
open network login page. Okay, that works. So, um, this gives you more of a description of everything, and now it's going to simulate everything for you because you allowed the certification here. And now it's actually pulling data. That's what I wanted to see. For some reason, uh, I didn't like Google Chrome, um, didn't like um, Microsoft Edge, but now we're allowing it. So now it's, um, there's a connectivity being sent out. So if we go towards like, a, I guess Facebook, right? It doesn't allow it, but it's trying to send out that request. If it does. Oh, there we go. See, it's trying to send it out and it's letting you know, it's like, okay, we're trying to connect to Facebook, but however, we're blocking that out. So that's one good thing with the console. And also you can see what packets are being sent out if you are analyzing that malware. Uh, let's go ahead and just close out of that and it will be done capturing the packets until you have another type of software going through. Um, let's just say for heaven's sake that you happen to have malware installed on your computer and you don't really necessarily know how to remove it. Um, reformat your computer. That's how I normally do. I, I don't take my chances. I just straight up reformat. But what you could do is go to your startups, disable any uh, software that is enabled and just disable it. Um, go to like, again, like if the domain name is popping up, what I would do is go to the host file and I would disable it by, uh, let's go towards our notepad here. Make sure you run as administrator. We want to open up a file. You want to go to our system 32. Uh, it's going to be under our drivers. It's going to be under ETC. You're going to go to all files. It'll be under hosts. So um, if it's trying to connect out to this domain name here, we can just null it out. Oh, I guess we can't right click and copy pasta. Um, so domain name here, then just uh, null it out with, with that, with zeros. So now it's not connecting to that domain name anymore. And you can further be safe with yourself of analyzing that software as well. Um, go ahead and close out of that. Uh, we can go towards our red registries here. Reg editor, red at registry edge. Uh, I can't English. Reg edit, and we're gonna go down towards our um, current user software. Then it'll be under Microsoft. We'll scroll down, look for Windows, and it'll be current version. Scroll down. It will be. Where is it? Run once and also run. So um, you want to disable any keys that are here. It's completely fine. You can just remove it. I do it all the time. Um, it also helps out like if you don't happen to have a virus, but there's other um, startups running in the background. This also helps, you know, your computer start up a whole lot faster. So you can also remove the keys. What I do is I copy this pathway and I scroll down a bit and I go to users, excuse me, local host or local machine. And uh, I type it in, uh, I paste it in right here. I'm gonna add. And now um, there's a whole different pathway and make sure you delete your uh, startups on there as well. So there's that for control. Um, what we want to do is go to MS config. It'll bring up system configuration and you want to go towards uh, your services, go to hide all Microsoft services and disable all or disable what you think 
happens to be a virus or not. Um, it might mask itself as uh, Microsoft Cor uh, Corporation, and this is where you have to do a little bit more investigation. But yeah. So there's that to disable a virus that's going to be starting up if you happen to run it on a non VM. Again, personally, me, um, if I happen to be um, running a virus on a non virtual machine, I just reformat immediately. I'm not going to take the risk. I will install a whole new Windows 10 operating system. So. Uh, but that's just personally me because I get paranoid instantly. Um, I hope that this video was informative. Uh, if you can't read packets, the PCAPs, use a packet editor or you can also open up packets with Wireshark. Um, and we'll be discussing how to read packets, how to analyze it in a separate video because there's no time for this video. Um, this is, th there needs to be dedicated video for how to read a PCAP file. Um, but I hope this gives you a generalized idea. Uh, we're going to be working on another two videos for a Windows version of a sandbox and also on a VMware for if you if you rather use those platforms instead. Uh, this happens to be Codexual aka Hacksual. Uh, be sure to check out my other channel. Uh, we talk more things about on the darker side of the internet uh, within reason though. Um, come through my live streams. Don't ask me, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I hack somebody? How do I hack a bank? Don't ask me that bullshit. I'm not gonna tell you. I don't have time for that. Ask me serious, legitimate questions and make sure you word them correctly. I don't condone to legal activity, so. Um, we also do have a discord. Um, yeah, knowledge is power, man. I'll see you guys around. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the post notifications, et cetera, et cetera. I'll see you guys in the next video and also become a Patreon if you haven't yet and support, support the channel. Take care. Thank you for sticking around. Please feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow my social media. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon or send in a donation of any amount with PayPal. It really helps out with post-production, equipment, food in my belly, and also continue making free content for you guys. Links in the description. Y'all take care, and thank you once again.